Welcome to Ransom Relix interview series. I'm Chris from RDX Works here with Booker from Emotecare. Welcome, Booker. Thanks. Hi. Um, really awesome that you had time to come in today. Uh, would you share a little bit about your project? Yeah, sure. So we're building obviously on uh, mental health provision on Radix. Um, what that looks like is we've essentially building all the infrastructure, all the tooling, the well-being tooling, an ecosystem that um, runs using the Radix wallet, roller, personas, things like this to really boost and give us some real data security, data ownership, uh, global network, which you know is, is sorely missing in the industry because essentially what we're up against is people that can't scale. And one thing that Radix does well, scale. Mm -hmm. Sounds really interesting. So um, can you maybe elaborate a little bit on the reason why I would need a crypto wallet involved in mental health? Yeah, sure. It's a good point. So essentially it does a few things for us that kind of don't exist at the moment. And I think it's really important to like um, zoom out a little bit and look at the reason why we need a permissionless network as well, because what we're dealing with here, we're, we're up against people like BetterHelp, Talkspace, Cerebral, MD Live, all these huge mental health provision companies. And essentially all of them have been caught at some point and charged, most of them, with a data breach or date hack, selling data, things like this. Um, they're centralized or, uh, entities that are really unethical in how they treat data. Um, much the same as we see in the banking system where you get really unethical banking practices. So what we're doing by moving into a permissionless network is taking away that threat. Now, Radix Wallet in itself does a bunch of stuff that's really cool for us anyway. We tweeted about it a few times recently. Um, you look at Roller in terms of like permission into access into things and personas is separation, separation of account and identity. They, you know, fundamentals of therapy is autonomy, privacy, you know, being able to make these decisions for yourself, which don't exist in our competitors. So, you know, on that, on, on kind of that front, it gives us a lot of edge. Okay. So I was also listening to one of your, uh, Twitter spaces. Uh, it was a Radix Twitter space. Um, what I found really interesting, also your approach to when you want to transfer some data, this is also always a huge issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so basically it there's it's a really complex complicated industry there's loads of different facets to it and there's not they all work a little bit differently but one thing that kind of transcends is data migration data sharing comes with huge risk and actually if you look at really like grassroot hospital level which you know co-founders worked in himself it's often done via fax and things like that and then you go to more digital mental health platforms and they they just have this really poor and shoddy um, security infrastructure in place. So what we've done is we've essentially, and this is again in tune with what the Radix wallet allows us to do, we've essentially created a note management system where the client using the keys on the wallet is the only person that has access. Now that means that the only person that give permission for someone else to access it to, which is huge. Like that's, that just doesn't exist. And yet, what does that do to the client? It gives them this like level of autonomy that is, you know, is beautifully in sync with what therapeutic recovery looks like. So it's, it, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that holistically all the therapeutic experience from the moment you book a session to the moment you have a session and, you know, you leave that service should all be part of the therapeutic process that doesn't exist currently. But having things like this data share and data ownership means that every part of the journey is ethical. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so you, you you're giving back the power to the user, so to say, and this is this sounds really really exciting. Maybe can you also give a little bit of overview on the founders in a short form and uh, yeah. to show our users what it is about uh, about the founders? Yeah, sure. So my background is I qualified as a psychotherapist in the UK. I practiced there for a few years before I moved out to Melbourne and I now work in community mental health, um, which is I'm scaling down as a moat scales up really. And the co-founder, Joe, Joe Morse, his background is in mental health social work. So he worked clinically in the UK for the NHS for a bunch of years. 
and now he, he well he actually worked for what, the biggest hospital in Melbourne um, in their social work team in very acute and chronic cases of mental health so we've both he's been doing that for about 15 years so we've both got quite a extensive history in that and then obviously I've, I've worked in web3 for a few years too so really we've got quite and Joe himself is involved in the Radix community and he's he's more Radix than anything really but um we've got this nice overview where I am as well now I mean I've been drawn in sell my bags and buy loads of Radix but anyway uh we've got this like nice overview of both industries I mean that's what lent that's what kind of led us into building a moat it's like we both just sat down and said is there a reason to build this we did three months of research, found all these pain points that data ownership, data security, having a global network solves, and then decided to jump in. Awesome. Honestly, really exciting stuff. So when are you planning to go live? So we currently have our MVP um, being tested in a private testing arena. We will have different stages to this. We think there will be available to Radix community to test and jump in and play around with Q3, Q4 this year. And we, we, we'll be looking to go to market end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of building to do and we'll have a lot of building after we go to market, but we'll have an end-to-end -end user experience by the end of the year, including some really nice novel features. Awesome. So uh, maybe to wrap this up, can you share with us where the community can find you at the moment? Yeah, sure. So we mostly do our business on Twitter. So I can't. It's a moat care underscore, I think. Yeah, and we will make sure to put this in the in the description. Don't worry. Yeah, and then you can come and say hi in Telegram. I mean, we don't have a token, so we don't have the biggest incentive for people to come in and hustle trying to get good deals. But we don't have a token yet, I should say. But oh, um, exciting. <laughs> well, you know, maybe I, I can't. I can't say much more than that. But we don't have one yet. Um, but then come Telegram or Twitter, yeah. Yep. I mean, this just means for users, they have to regularly check in what you guys are doing to get mm -hmm. the newest updates. Yep. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. This is Chris from RDX Works with Booker from Remote Care. See you next time.